sometimes when the brain is really, really fudgy, I actually step back from my desk and I say again out loud, what can I and only I do right now that's going to move me forward? And sometimes I might just take myself out and just walk around the block, come back, breathe, breathe, get quiet. It, it, it really helps. It's really important to acknowledge your successes. Why would you focus on what you haven't done? Why not big up and sell to yourself what you have achieved? Acknowledge it. We are strong women. We are unique in the stories that we can tell and what we can bring to the table without a shadow of a doubt. More so now than ever. When I started out, I was in a very male-dominated society. And with the positions that I held, there were very few women. But I quickly realized that I had to set boundaries. It's important that we encourage each other motivate each other, help each other, support each other. And from what I hear, that's really happening here right now. It's so important before we move on to the next stage of our lives. Each of us can affect change and growth in ourselves and have impact with those around us. We really can. Something else that I don't buy into, and that's perfection. I believe if we set ourselves up to be perfect, guess what? Might fall flat. And then we sabotage ourselves. Why not be the best that we can be? That's good enough. A number of years ago, actually, 15 years ago, when I had my first email address, I decided it needed to be something strong, something that said something. And I thought, ha, ah, my B, be the best at AOL.com. That was the name. And my stepdaughter helped me with the logo design. And it was a cherub with a great big arrow. So it meant that every time I was sending an email and every time someone received it, or I was writing, there was the header, be the best. And you know, that's wonderful. But if anyone has any questions, I will do my absolute best to answer them. And then we can cover some other aspects as well. Yes. When did you start writing? When did I start writing? Thank you for that question. What's your name? Nice. Thank you. I started writing 35 years ago. I was asked to do an article for a broadsheet newspaper in Ireland. And I had never written an article in my life. And, but I delivered. And the editor said, hmm, if you were willing, we can actually teach you and guide you to become a journalist. But I had other ideas. But all my life, I have written. I moved to, I packed a suitcase and I came to London all those years ago from Dublin. I, my life was evolved around storytelling and I was the storyteller in my family. And I also, I was always writing some stories. I was always armed with a notepad and pen. I was mentioning at lunchtime how my life changed irrevocably, I, beyond recognition, over now, 20 years ago. I was very ill for a very long time. And I had to learn how to manage my illness. Hence, I moved to the mountains of South. To write. It was like a healing process. Poems would come fast and furious. I could write a poem in 10 minutes. I couldn't, 
I don't know where the inspiration came from. And I started to write more short stories. And then one day, I, but I was writing in a pen name. I, I didn't dare. I didn't have the confidence or the self-esteem. I had lost all of that. And I said to my husband, Chris, I can develop a book from these short stories. I'm going to do it. And someone had said to me, why are you hiding all this work? It's gathering dust. You need to get it out there. But I was afraid to get it out there. I was afraid of the criticism, perhaps, or people wouldn't like it. But in 2013, my first book was published. And that spurred me on. And in 2014, I decided, Miriam, it's a bit like I am today. It's been a while since I've been on a stage. I decided it was time to step up to the plate and stand in the light of who I was, which was Miriam McGurk, and write in my own name, allow people in. And that's, it, it, and it, that's what's happened. And I have to say, it is the most challenging career I've ever had. It is the most testing career I've ever had. And there have been many times when I thought, you know what? I only ever wanted to publish one book. I'm going to walk away. And maybe I'll wait a few hours or wait till the next day. And then inspiration strikes or an idea strikes. And I know how to pull an aspect of the book together again. And off I go. Follow your heart. Follow your passion. Never give up. From many different places. Um, certainly being in Turkey, up a mountain, 2,000 feet up a mountain, surrounded by forest. Inspiration. Can, what I do, actually, sometimes, I go out on date days. I have date days with myself. And all I bring with me is a notepad and paper. And I, whatever it may be, I might simply be sitting in a coffee shop where there's a different kind of buzz. I might take a train journey. I might go and walk somewhere. I might go to an art gallery and just sit quietly and observe not just the people and the artwork. And... Sometimes I come back and I write about the people who've passed in and out of my life that day. Or sometimes just being away from my desk, or as I call it, my writing cave, I come back and I feel fresh and I'm ready to get back to the page again. So inspiration comes from different places. And actually, I'll give you a little example. On this book I'm currently writing, my fourth book, the working title at the moment is Days on Our Street. And the inspiration for that came about, I like to walk early in the morning. Every morning I would walk, it's about seven in the morning, and I would see this old lady, bent lady, looking down at the ground with a, with a dog. She'd wild gray hair, and so had the dog. She never said hello, but I'd always say good morning. And I came back, she, whatever the weather, she was there walking the dog. And one day I came back, and I thought, you know what? I think there's a short story in this. And so the dog became an Irish wolfhound called Lulabelle. And the lady became a character known as Florence Scott Thomas. And as I was writing the short story, which was well received, I thought, you know what? There's a novel in here. And that is the basis of my now novel. And, and that's what happens. I would also say it's really important for inspiration to flow is to get quiet, to get calm, to breathe, to be. If we keep doing, because remember, we're human beings, we're not human doings. And that's even with the work that you're doing, whether you're studying and you're absorbing, you're in lectures, you're revising, whatever you're doing, you've got, you, you know, You've got to be aware of the, the, um, the times that you spend on working, but you also have to pull away as well to press the pause button and come back refreshed. But the one thing in when I started out writing short stories, there's always a thread and a weave. And each short story, there is a link. So there's a start, a middle, and an end, right to the end. But now I'm writing, and what's known as, and this has become... I didn't, I didn't know. Someone said to me, I was giving a talk last year and there was a lady in the audience, a very well-respected author, 
And she said, Miriam, I'd like to understand what you write in. I said, well, it's contemporary fiction. She said, that's not good enough. So I thought, oh, OK. So I went and checked, and I, 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 I'm now writing what is called known as Uplit. And Uplit is, it's about second chances. It's about hope. It's about belief. It's about fun, comedy, romance. And there is one thing that I have to include in my Uplit novel, and that is H-E-A, happy ever after. Working and then moved to writing, or would you start writing earlier on? Gosh, I think I wouldn't have had the experiences. I wouldn't have walked my journey. So perhaps I wouldn't have had the inspiration. So maybe I would have limited myself back then. I don't know. Maybe with had I had a lot more training back then. But actually, I'm so grateful to being given this opportunity and the possibilities that are out there for me now. And perhaps I wasn't ready and I had to go through all of that first, which you will learn and grow from. Nice question. See it, feel it, and then go live it. Live it to the absolute potential with your unique story and the power that is within each of you. Go and have a great life. Thank you.